The, the task of imagining the kingdom in some ways is to go deeper uh, in some themes that are just touched on in desiring the kingdom. So in imagining the kingdom, you will find the notion of habit much more central for this reason. Um, I think for reasons that Paul describes in Colossians chapter 3 when he's talking about the virtues and he talks about putting on love. Love is a habit. It's a disposition, it's an inclination that we acquire. So to say that uh, we are what we love and that our loves are shaped by liturgies, by practices, is really to just recognize that love is a habit. And in some ways, sanctification, discipleship, is a process of rehabituation. That is, acquiring new habits, undoing and rolling back bad habits, implanting and infusing in us good habits, which are simply what we call virtues. So the role of habit, um, I think, is something that is underappreciated, especially in North American Protestantism. We kind of react to habit language and we react to virtue language because it sounds a bit like works righteousness to us. And that, that's a fair and healthy skepticism for us to bring. But really, historically, what this has meant for Christians is recognizing that um, a lot of our action is generated out of character dispositions, not out of decisions that we make in our head. So if we, if we underestimate the power of habit, we will actually underestimate how much our habits are being recruited by secular liturgies. So I hope that it's an invitation for Christians to think about discipleship in new ways, to recognize the power of habit, to realize that God made us <laughs> creatures of habit, and that's why God gives us the gift of practices to reform and reorient our habits toward him and his kingdom.